In 2018, Marvel reunited its original Defenders lineup of Hulk, Namor, Doctor Strange, and Silver Surfer for a set of one-shots called The Best Defense. While this seems like it would turn out great, since it had been multiple years since the characters interacted in any meaningful way, the series winds up not working out that way. To find out why, let's go through each issue to dissect why this crossover doesn't work the way it should. On the bright side, Marvel provides an actual reading order for us, so we don't need to figure this one out ourselves. The first issue belongs to The Immortal Hulk, written by Al Ewing and illustrated by Simone de Mio. The reason why this issue is called Immortal Hulk instead of just Hulk is because Immortal Hulk is the title of Hulk's ongoing series, which is also written by Al Ewing. This one shot actually feels like an early issue of Immortal Hulk, which is cool. It opens with the Hulk's intuition guiding Bruce Banner to the skeleton of Doctor Strange, with Strange's magic artifact the Eye of Agamotto missing. Banner goes to look around the bar for clues, but finds the town is completely empty. He eventually finds some people hiding in church, who do actually drive him to the bar. Inside, he finds an old guy getting revenge on police officers by torturing them with visions of their true selves glimpsed by the Eye of Agamotto. Banner, however, doesn't fear his true self, and beats up the old guy to get the Eye of Agamotto. This summons the ghost of a really old Doctor Strange, who is somehow responsible for his own death. The issue ends there, but it is a very strong start to the crossover, hooking readers with the mystery of what happens to this future version of Doctor Strange. The second one-shot belongs to Namor the Submariner, written by Chip Starsky and illustrated by Carlos Magno. This issue opens with King Namor struggling to unite the council members of Atlantis in his war against the surface. Namor's current plan is to recruit the ancient offshoot of the Atlanteans known as the Zodani. Nobody likes this plan, so Namor strikes off on his own, eventually winding up in Zodan after traversing a dark and twisty tunnel. If you're wondering how this will connect to the Doctor Strange plot like I was when reading this, just wait. Once in Zodan, Namor is attacked by the royal family, who aren't happy that Namor is there to recruit them. They give Namor one chance to prove himself by killing a dangerous monster. Namor goes with Zodan's princess and kills the monster, then the king tries to kill Namor since the test was actually just an excuse to murder him. Namor flies the king to the surface to fight, but instead finds that Zodan is actually another planet. The king dies of oxygen loss because space, but Namor is saved at the last moment by the Silver Surfer's surfboard, ending the issue. Interesting? Definitely not where you'd expect this to go, but interesting. The issue on its own isn't bad, but as a Defenders issue, it doesn't connect to the other characters at all, and just seems like a full-length excuse to get Namor to go, out of, to go into outer space. Which, fair? Well, the next issue is the Doctor Strange issue, which actually ties things back together. Written by Jerry Dugan and illustrated by Greg Smallwood, this issue has nothing to do with Strange's ongoing series at the time, unlike the Immortal Hulk story. Instead, it takes place in the far future on a dead Earth, with a very old Doctor Strange walking around getting shards of, well, something. He keeps them in his satchel, which also contains something that talks and eats magic. Apparently, in this future, something happened to the Earth. And then after that, it was ravaged to its current dead state by Strange's archenemy Dormammu. Strange decides to finally put his plan into motion and summons Dormammu, who tries to kill Strange with powerful magic. Strange blocks this by channeling all of the magic into the head of the Hulk, which is what was in Strange's satchel. Hulk's head then explodes with the excess energy, and Strange flies away with the shards of the Silver Surfer's board, the shards he's been gathering. He then travels back in time to the present day, but this kills his body, leaving only Strange's astral form to contact the Hulk and save the Earth. This is another really solid issue, presenting an interesting desolate future and a cool final gambit on Strange's part. The only real wrinkle here is that this issue, and the whole crossover, only features this version of Doctor Strange, so it isn't really a Defenders reunion. The final character-focused issue belongs to the Silver Surfer, although he's barely in it. Written and illustrated by Jason Latour, this issue details the spaceport of a dying world, as ruffians fight each other for the money necessary to get aboard the last spaceship off-world before the world is harvested by a giant cosmic death train. Pretty much everyone on the planet is desperate and violent, and a fight breaks out between a little girl and a group of bandits. A hooded stranger breaks up the fight, revealing himself to be Silver Surfer in disguise. Silver Surfer tries to de-escalate the fight peacefully, but the little girl kills the lead bandit so she can leave. Silver Surfer reveals to the audience that his master Galactus was going to eat the planet before the train destroyed it, unless Silver Surfer could find someone worth saving. Ultimately, he could not, thanks to the little girl's murderous tendencies, so Galactus devours the planet. Silver Surfer then realizes that the train is going to destroy the Earth, and he must stop it. However, before he can do anything, his board flies off into space, presumably to grab Namor from the end of his one-shot. So, while this issue does lead directly into the finale and truly establishes the stakes of the crossover, it also somehow manages to feel completely standalone from the others. It is not a bad issue by any means, albeit a bit wordy, but it still doesn't feel cohesive with all the others despite its importance. And that is all the character one-shots. Before we get to the last issue, though, it is worth noting that all four issues so far featured a guy in a ghost Halloween costume murdering some aliens while laughing gleefully. 
it comes up as interludes in the Hulk and the more issues, while Doctor Strange and Silver Surfer see it in visions. With that out of the way, we come to the final issue, titled Defenders The Best Defense, also written by Al Ewing, but illustrated this time by Joe Bennett. The entire issue is narrated by Doctor Strange as he enacts his plan to save Earth from the train. Oh, and in case you were wondering, the train does not get a more specific name, it is just the train. Anyway, Strange recruits Hulk and they go kidnap two leopard-headed soul stockbrokers who borrowed a bunch of Earth souls from Mephisto, with the intention to pay him back once Earth is destroyed. Strange then stuffs the souls of the two soul brokers into the being controlling the train, an old Doctor Strange villain known as Nebulon, to induce a spasm. Well, Nebulon is controlling the controller of the train, and the bedsheet guy from earlier was Nebulon murdering all the controller's helpers to gain full control. But to simplify, Nebulon controls the train, Hulk beats up Nebulon, then Strange stuffs the wily soul brokers into Nebulon to make the real controller spasm. This knocks Vodon, the planet from this Namor issue, into empty space, so Namor and Silver Surfer team up to create a wormhole to teleport Vodon into his sun. But Silver Surfer needs energy, so the Vodani princess sacrifices herself to power Silver Surfer. Then, this wormhole not only saves Vodon, but also moves the train slightly off course, saving the Earth. Finally, to top things off, Mephisto shows up to eat the souls of the two soul brokers who are inside Nebulon, so Mephisto eats Nebulon. This sets the train back to its normal, not going to eat Earth course, and everything is okay! Well, Namor said that the princess died, and Silver Surfer said that somebody died, and Doctor Strange is kidnapped by Mephisto, but he has a plan. What is that plan? Who knows, because the issue ends and the crossover with it. By the end, the problems with this crossover are pretty clear. None of the one-shots connect except for the Hulk and Doctor Strange ones, and even then the Doctor Strange issue would work just fine without the Hulk issue. Namor and Silver Surfer have nothing to do with each other or the others, and the two even feel sidelined in the final issue. There's supposed to be some character stuff going on with the Silver Surfer questioning his role as essentially a god and Namor misunderstanding what it means to be a leader, but they both feel tangential. Neither feel like they've learned anything and don't connect to the story at large. Hulk also gets nothing worthwhile to do after his solo issue, leaving the finale feeling like a Doctor Strange story with guest appearances from the others. This is fine, but with no interconnection in the setup and uneven focus in the finale, the crossover simply doesn't work as a crossover, leaving both the whole and each individual part weaker than they could have been.